Ladies, gentlemen, and non-binary friends, my name is Kat, and this is Moni. Hey, guys. And we are your co-hosts. On behalf of the Fake Ass Book Club, a.k.a. The Bad Podcast, we welcome you aboard the mothership. We are sending you on a non-stop trip directly into the shenanigans of this podcast. If this is your first time, please listen carefully until the end of this announcement. However, if you are a frequent flyer, you may skip directly to the show and enjoy. The Fake Ass Book Club has a running time of about one hour. We will be ascending to an altitude of whatever cocktails we have available. Also, we most likely will be talking at the speed of roughly 100 miles per minute. When the fab neon sign illuminates, make sure your headphones are plugged in, your devices are charged, and your pearls are properly clutched. Yes, Lord. As this podcast contains explicit language, strong opinions, and adult content. Individuals under 18 are not advised to listen and do so at their own risk. And we would also like to remind you that this is a fake-ass book club. So, uh... If you're an avid reader or if you never plan to pick up a book in your life, this is still the podcast for you. The only must is that you show up. To any and all haters aboard, you already know where the emergency exit is. Bye, Felicia. If this podcast is not for you, we understand. However, tampering with, damaging, or trying to destroy our positive vibes are strictly prohibited by FAB bylaws, which clearly state good vibes only. Before takeoff, you will find information about us and this podcast at our website at thefabpodcast.com. We strongly suggest that you follow us across social media and subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. If you have any questions or want to reach out, please don't hesitate to email us at thefabpodcast at gmail.com. We know you have a choice in podcasts, and on behalf of The Fab Podcast, we would like to thank you for choosing us. So with that, buckle up, sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Hey, y'all, this is Moni. And this is Kat. Hey, Kat. And this, this is, is the Fake, fake Ass Book Club. <laughs> Wait, can we both say it or no? All right, y'all, what's up? We're back for another episode of the Fake Ass Book Club. This is your girl, Moni. Hi, I'm Kat. Happy podcast. Hey, everybody. So, I'm, um, yeah, so, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got I to gotta admit something. What What do you need to admit? So, I. why are we here today? Let's talk about that real quick. What do we do? Like, what do we do? Why are we here recording? Uh, pop quiz, asshole. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're always asking me questions. <laughs> I, it's on you that's now. true. Um, we're here because we knew that we needed to start making time to spend more time together and make ourselves smarter with books. Yes. Okay. So we're only going to be doing one of those two things mm-hmm. you just said because <laughs> we didn't read our book, guys. So welcome nope. to the first episode that's actually a fake ass book club because. Nobody read the book. So, um, yeah, basically, we're just going to be talking about stuff. But <laughs> so before we get start, started talking about stuff, you guys, we are still going to do our standard um, dedication. So we always want to dedicate each episode to anybody actually taking time to connect and listen with us. Thank you. And I want to dedicate this episode to you, friend. <gasps> me? And to me. Okay. And yes. you? And to me and to okay. us. Because, again, like you said, I mean, this whole exercise has just been a literal, ec- um, literal. manifestation. I see what literal. you did there. Oh, my God. We want to take the time to connect with each other and do something for us. So I'm just proud of us for actually doing it. This is something that's been in the works for a minute. So shout out to us. Also, shout out to our sound engineer for, like, Dealing making time. Us. Listen, we are so... You guys, we're... <laughs> I'm not even I need you to understand we probably work his whole nerves but we yeah. appreciate his patience and he's making us look good out here yeah. that's that's the real thing like he's like throwing us alley-oops I don't even do sports but I think that's probably a decent analogy or probably better than that what's better than an alley-oop like a, a nothing oh nothing. see okay yeah so that's what it is that's maybe what he like when um, like the quarterback like throws those really beautiful Hail Mary passes that get caught by the running back Okay. Those are beautiful. Okay. It's all of those things, guys, for sports people. So, yeah, I just want to shout us out because it just feels really good. It's starting to get more comfortable. So, hopefully, it's lit, y'all. Mm. It's lit. And I don't want to say that too much because, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah, I definitely appreciate um, the fact that 
he allowed us to do this thing. So I'll stop it right there because yeah. I'll keep going. What about you? Because it's not fake ass expertise. He has like real ass expertise. Listen, and, fit, and we need it in real life. So, um, yes. Yeah, so, we're our fake asses. So, who oh, do you want to dedicate? I want to dedicate this podcast to, I don't know when this airs, but like this week, Naomi Campbell just had a baby. Oh, damn. And I'm like obsessed with her um, and just always have been. Like when I've, I've had a like subscription to Vogue since I was like in fifth grade. Really? Damn. <laughs> That's pretty official, friend. I, I wasn't thinking. I just liked it. Right. I and mean, there's nothing wrong with it. she was in it all the time. That was really it. Like, I wanted to get glimpses, like, of her. Like, that was the She's only beautiful. way you could see Naomi Campbell. Like, there was no social media. And I was like, oh, my goodness. This is like, people can look like this? I know. Like, encapsulated in time. <laughs> you like, know what I mean? Like, what? And so she just had a baby. And I'm just, I'm so happy for her. So. She's a new mom. She's a new mom. What a cool experience. I hope that she's, I mean, she's just so brilliant. I, I just, I followed her for so long and just really happy for her. So I never met her. She's, I don't mean nothing to her, but this is dedicated to her because way to go. She's at an 50, icon. Like she's her an icon. And Good like for Janet, you. like having babies when you felt like it. Good for you. Amen to that, friend. Yeah. So, all right then. So I guess we'll just get right into it. Um, so I thought it'd be cool for us to kind of talk about I mean, kind of, that's a good segue. Like, we could mm. just talk about why we're here, why we decided to do this podcast. Um, and, like, what's the background? Like, what's what was the process? What was the thought pattern? And why exactly? I'm going to flip it on you because this was your idea. So 100%. Money, I'm, I'm happy to do this. What was the thought pattern? How do we get here? Like, what, crack, what, crack, crack. what was the... What was the uh, origin story? The origin story of the Fab Podcast. So if I had to graphic novel it. Everyone loves a good origin story. Okay, so... (laughs) (laughs) No, so I would say the origin story for this was basically me feeling like I needed a hobby. I need something to do that isn't based in being a mom, that is not based in be, like working, that isn't based in something that's outside of myself 100%. Now, I will say that all of those things are a part of me and a big part of my life and I enjoy and am grateful for those experiences. However, I do not think that it's always easy to include yourself like when you're thinking about like, okay, what do I need to do today? I'm always the last person. So I just wanted to create a space for myself and my friends because it's something that makes me so happy. Like when I think about what's my favorite thing to do, it is literally this, y'all. Like I talk, anybody who knows me knows I just be fucking talking (laughs) about whatever. Just, you know, just talking. So... I wanted to create a space where I could do that with people that I love and enjoy. And also, this was just about me learning how to do something new. So, like, having a vision, like, actually being able to conceptualize something and then follow through with my intention and action and see it kind of materialize. So, yeah, so that's kind of how how it happened. Why was that important to you? It was super. So he asked me, why was that important to me? That was important to me for a few reasons. For one, as a mom... I do think that it's easy to get wrapped up in your kids. And I have witnessed women who sacrifice themselves for their kids. And that is part of motherhood. Like you do put a part of yourself aside. And honestly, that's been one of my favorite things about being a mom is learning that kind of love. Because even though I knew it existed, it's different to feel it. Mm -hmm. And so being on the other side of that. But I also feel like it's super easy to make everything about your kids. And then you do it for so long that it becomes a habit. When you finally have that time, once your kids are grown and out of your house and have their own lives, you, what do I do? You know, like, how do I go on? I was like that. I mean, and no shade to anybody who has felt like that, because that's a real thing. I understand that. But I liked my life before I had kids. Sure. Like, I'm not one of these people who feels like, I don't know what I would have done if I never, (laughs) you know, and and not to make fun of those people, because I understand the feeling. But it's like, no, I mean, I, I had a good life before. I liked my life before. And... You know, I like my life now, but I definitely want to feel like that once they're gone and they're doing their own thing. So this is more just like I don't want my kids feeling like they have to be my everything when they're grown. I don't want to project that energy on them of desperation and like, I miss you guys. And I, I'm useless now. I just want to <laughs> fold your clothes. It's like, nah, I really don't want to be like folding your clothes still. Right. I will because it'll be like a novelty if you right. let me at that point. But I just wanted to be able to have things that I'm involved in, they can see me as a full person. It's important Mm. for them to see me as a person with interests and hobbies and stuff like that. So that's definitely part of it. Um, And I incorporated you because you're one of my favorite people to hang out with. I am so, so lucky, blessed, (laughs) however you want to call it, to have 
like a circle of friends who are super awesome. And um, and you know most of them, and so I know you know you this. And want to see you win, and I it's super do. supportive. And, you know, I just thought you'd be a really great person to do this with. We had some other friends involved initially. And, you know, they, you know, they are super busy, super high powered business ladies. And nah, that have, was like Rory and Mal. We had to fire them. Nah, man. No, it, wasn't fire. it was definitely not that, you know, <laughs> it but, it, that. you know, it worked out how it, how yeah. it was supposed to be. And I'm grateful for it. So I appreciate you. Yeah. I appreciate this experience. Definitely. So it's been really fun. I appreciate you as well, friend. I'm really glad you dragged me into this. Like I said, I'm not I'm an introvert. So I would have never thought to even do this. Um, a lot of stuff. It's like, oh. I'll hear an idea and I'll be like, wow, that's a great idea. I never would have thought of that. I guess that's why you keep other people around because I'm not the origin spring of all good ideas. Like no, I yeah. have a couple, though. But I'm glad you suggested this. I'm glad you did this. So why um, did you say yes? Oh, because it was a good idea. Okay. I think that a lot of time, like, that's why I keep you around. Like, you nice. are so much. What did we say earlier? You're the. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Because what was the analogy? <laughs> well, because we were talking about how you the stuff that you like to do is all the stuff I don't like to do. A hundred Like, you are so official. Like, uh, like, the first time we went out of the country, you organized that. You were like, hey, get your passport. Get your plane ticket. Just give me the money. I'll take care of it. Yeah. You know, like, I was that like, kind I'll of, just send all the emails And even to this me. podcast so. is like that. I just give you the money and you take care of it. And that's my favorite. Right. Like, I don't... A lot of the things that... A lot of people feel uncomfortable handing control over. I don't. And so when you take it, I love it. So I think that uh, that we balance each other well in that way. And I do like to talk. So you this do. was a <laughs> opportunity to talk more. I'm like, yes, yes. I'm one of those introverts who likes to talk a lot. Well, and I think that's a misconception about introverts. I mean, a lot of people that, that I like a lot are introverted people and I think they fascinate me, generally speaking, because you don't always hear what they have to say out loud the first time. They're usually sitting back. They're listening. They're taking it all in. And so I'm always kind of interested to hear. But even though you're an introvert, it did, I think just because you're introverted does not mean that you're not an interesting person. Like you don't oh, have anything you. to say. So yeah. I will, you know, definitely double down on the fact that you're one of my faves to talk to. And mostly because you are so well read, I was thinking about the fact that people, I mean, so even if you don't read books, so let me not make it sound like if you don't read books, you can't people be interesting. Are different. But people are different. But when you, I like people who geek out for shit. Because I'm fascinated by that. Because honestly, that was the first spark, right? Like, I actually was like, what am I passionate about? I have a really hard time being a halfway person, right? So when you're my friend, bitch, you're my friend. <laughs> okay? I'm going, I'm going hard. And I'm okay. going to care In more about the shit about you than you are Every for yourself, time. damn near. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And so You're always on defense. I, yeah, I'm always. <laughs> and my thing is, is like, I'm just so, so because I know I'm like that, I don't, I'm always trying to find the balance. I'm not always excellent at doing that. So Who I have is? to, I don't know. Show me that no person. Where whether, they do that at? Shit. I don't know. I'm just letting y'all know. It ain't me most of the time. But I do know because I'm that way, I'm selective about who I decide to spend my energy with and who I'm. As you should be. Who I, you know, will actually invest my Cheers time and stuff to. Cheers to being ding, selective. Ding. Yeah. So. Um, Too many people out here. It's a lot of people. And not everybody deserves your time and energy. No, they don't. And so um, I've just been really lucky that we've been able, because we've known each other for how many years? Do the math, Well, it's not even... Um, lots and lots of... You know, lots. Lots. Decades. <laughs> okay, we decades. can start talking about it in decades. Decades. You guys are welcome for that. That's a long, long time. And we've been able to sustain our relationship over that time. So I, I, I like to invest. Like, I'm the friend who will call people out of the blue I haven't talked to in forever and be like, we need to, like, we need to meet up. Like, mm -hmm. let's have a talk. Like, let's spend, you know, two hours. That's what I always loved one about hour. you because you would just be down to it. Was you never needed a reason to celebrate. Like, no. let's just do something because we can. Like, are we free or not? We're free. What are, we, what are we doing? And what's better than this? Okay. I spend so much of my time, y'all, with people who I would never. <laughs> <laughs> and that's only you know for saying? money. It's for money. <laughs> I'm prostitute myself daily. <laughs> that's the only for the cash. I would ever dollar ever, dollar bills, y'all. Like, yeah, yeah. So it's just it's like if I if there's something that I can do when I say I have two hours to spend with my friend talking about stuff I want to talk about. Sign me up. Yeah. And it's something that we can share with people. That's the weird part. I didn't expect to really. 
you know, it's weird because I'm a sociable person, but I'm also kind of private. So it's weird to put myself out here in, in You have boundaries. I told you I was trying to put together a new pantheon of goddesses. And you are definitely my reference for the goddess of boundaries. Yeah, man. Because and it's wonderful whenever you feel strange or weird about putting up boundaries because you feel like it's impolite or you hurt someone's feelings. Just oh, remember man, no. that you defining your boundaries gives other people permission to define their boundaries. 100%. So I never have to worry. It's like, well, is Moni only just saying this because she's nah, being nice or because nah. she doesn't want to be impolite? No. I never have to worry about that. She's saying her yes means yes mm-hmm. and her no means no. And then it's like, uh, okay, well, then I, I don't even have to right. worry about like, oh, well, is she is she going to be putting herself out? I don't like did? the subtext. That's the thing. Too. People do that to me all like the time that. where they'll ask me. It's like, well, are you sure that's OK? I'm like, I suggested it. If it wasn't I did okay, that to you earlier. You did. Actually. That's why I'm referencing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, because <laughs> it's like I would never have suggested it if it didn't work for right, me. Like right. all the stuff that doesn't work for me didn't even get brought up. Right. That's true. Because it doesn't work for me. It's just nice. I mean, I, you know, I appreciate that. I appreciate being around people that know you to that extent and who also I like having genuine exchanges and I hope that that's what this continues to be because like and listeners I hope you enjoy that too because it's about to get mad honest up in here because we're because we didn't we didn't necessarily have a book to share today, yeah, man. but we did because I don't know if you hear this all the time. We're we'll like, oh, you got to watch this thing on Netflix. It's ah, like, <laughs> I do. I haven't watched TV. In and a. it starts to feel like homework because there's all this stuff building <laughs> up. We're like, I want to talk to you about this thing. And it's like, I get it. And I love talking to you about stuff, too. But at some point I have to sleep and I, this I don't work to do. always get to. Yeah, that's why podcasts are great because I can listen to it in the car because I'm always driving somewhere. But we did sit down and watch In Our Mother's Gardens on Netflix. Netflix. Netflix? Netflix. Netflix. That's the word. I had a cocktail. It's really good. That's okay. It is good. Thank you. And I, and you guys should know, too, because I think we said in that very, like, intro episode that we bring snacks. We bring... Yeah. So, understand that before we got here, I, I went over to Kat's house, and <laughs> I actually had to make a run. And I, I saw something that made me think about her, so I bought it. Thank and I you. gave it to her birthday is coming up. So I was like, oh, I'm just going to give it to her like early yes. birthday present. And I, that's why I appreciate gifts. Like just when you see something you like, just buy that. I just it buy it. it does, yeah, this isn't her birthday. gifts giving can be a lot of pressure and it gets It doesn't to need to be. I literally saw it and was like, this is my friend. <laughs> and it was like a tea set. It was like really pretty, like porcelain. looks very feminine yes. as she is. She's very like was, strong feminine yeah, energy. Chic. And um, when I pulled up and I gave it to her, she was like, oh, my God, guess what I'm making for you? Tea. I made you tea. She made me some luscious, delicious herbal tea. Blooming these, zen tea. It was so good. We sat and had a cup we of tea. We did. We'll, we'll post some pictures. It was it very was nice. nice. I liked it. <laughs> and But I'm just saying, like, those are the moments that I cherish. I like any time that I get to spend around the people that I like and making it. Making it special. Like, we're, I mean. What are we waiting for? What the hell are we waiting for? Like, yes, for? I'm getting out the wine glasses. I'm getting out the cute stuff. <laughs> yep. I'm cooking. Like, we're going to, this like, is what a thing now. For? The we're queen here. To show up. Ma- it's like hey, the queen is here. We're here. <laughs> we're, we're out here to celebrate ourselves. Yes, very much so. so. Every day. And I encourage you guys to do the same. And that's the yeah. other part. Like, us doing this, I hope that, you know, maybe by us sharing that story it, um, it inspires you to do whatever it is you're and sitting back possible. like damn I'm trying to make time because trust me it's not easy and, I, and this has been work but it's been the good kind so let us give you permission now to do whatever fancy extra whatever stuff you want to do that people tell you you're doing too much whatever they're not doing enough ooh so just you keep the, you keep doing listeners. too much while they're all sour looking mad exactly because it is adding I think just having this space to do this with you um, I feel like I'm learning a lot about myself and I do Same. like that. I mean, just listening back to myself talking. I mean, it could be painful at times. <laughs> yeah, this, if nothing <laughs> like uses to help get out of your depression. For, I just realized today that I've been in a low grade depression throughout this whole pandemic stuff. And it's not yep. surprising. Like, that's a very natural human reaction. I'm not down on myself for that. But I didn't realize it until it was gone. Like, that's what's know, so right? crazy about depression. Like, it's just, do you, just, I'm sorry, everybody. I got to nerd out. So I watched Big Mouth on Netflix too which is a cartoon about puberty and a lot of people don't like it because it's very explicit but it's very real and they have a character called the depression kitty that just comes and sits on your chest (laughs) and they're just like man just blow that off just lay here and just not the depression kitty yeah the depression kitty and it was like I just noticed and actually you fight the depression kitty with the gratitude toad 
And okay. <laughs> All right. He's the gratitude, to, the gratitude toad. And that shrinked it and it made it. Be- but now that it's like off me, I'm like, oh, my goodness. I'm like, I forgot I could even feel this good. Well, you look lovely today, Thank too. She you. walked out of her house and like <laughs> the clouds parted and it was angel dust on her cheeks and shit. I was like, damn, she's glistening out like here. She was great. Super, I'm just super happy. And I was like, yeah. wow, I didn't even realize I was depressed because you're just going, 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 going. I'm telling you, and I'm looking for that in people around me. And mm. it's almost like I can spot. It. I feel like it's a mm. superpower a little yes, bit. That's your gift. It is. Like I feel like I can usually spot the people who are gonna be an energy drain mm. or and the I'm people not good who are that. going to Yeah, because and <laughs> And now I know to listen to you more because that's your gift. I'm like telling you try you, to man, tell you like, nah, I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> like, mm. Or if you do, do it at a level. Like there's levels to shit. Mm-hmm. Like what I will say is that when that's you're That's where the boundaries come yeah. in. It's like you're fine for dinner. You're fine for dinner. We can go out, we can meet up somewhere. You can't come to my house, but I'll meet you somewhere <laughs> and we can do the thing and then we'll leave and and that's our thing and that's and and my thing I don't think people should be offended by that I think mm-hmm. I like to honor people in the spaces that they shine the best like we're not gonna necessarily be vacation friends that plan family trips and that have be life or death if you're I mean, going overseas you need to be man, right I'll, first of all let me use this as the time <laughs> to do a public service announcement please go do not travel with people who you've who you don't no, like that. It can be a whole ass or who nightmare. don't really have your back like that. I've told this story before about how I almost drowned in Florida traveling <laughs> with some hoes who are cute <laughs> and everything, uh. but they don't really give a fuck about you. We were just floating in the ocean, like on the inner tubes and stuff. And you know me, about anyone who knows me knows this, I will fall asleep in a second. Two if I have a moment, in. I fell asleep in the ocean on an inner tube and these hoes left me out in the ocean. I woke up, I'm out, I've drifted away and I'm panicking, but I know in my mind, panicking can kill you. Let me relax. Um, what do I know about this? I do remember something about like if you're kind of out in the ocean a little bit, you don't you don't swim in a straight line. You swim at an angle to get back to the shore because the ocean will just keep pushing you back. So you have to swim at like a 45 Damn. degree See, angle to get back to pause, the shore. Because you read books. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just saying it's some helpful information out there, guys. This was from somebody else's thing of survival because people do drown to death. Oh my God. So like I in that moment, I'm like, OK, stay calm and you can freak out when you get on land. So I get back on land and I had to walk back to where our beach blankets were and stuff like that. I'm like, why did y'all leave me out there? And they're like, well, we didn't want to wake you up. I'm like, so you're too Mm -hmm. dumb to hang out with. So now I know that. So you'll let me die. I don't even really (laughs) in my sleep. Yeah, I haven't seen them in decades because you're not the type of people I need to be doing this with because mm -hmm. I could have died. Like, what in your mind thinks it's like, we should leave this sleepy hoe out here in the ocean? I know you're a sleepy hoe, so I'm like, bitch, get your ass up because what I'm not about to do is be babysitting you in the fucking ocean. (laughs) And so that might seem rude that I say that to you, but also but it's, it's for like, your betterment and for your life. Because yeah. now I get to live more, <laughs> and know? I like that. So yeah, don't travel with people who don't travel, especially international travel. We were just man, in Florida, yeah. but really Florida is like a lot. It's a whole nother country. Right? It's a yeah, whole man. nother vibe than where we're from. So yeah, when you're traveling, make sure you're with people who love you and got your back. And yeah, no, but I really wanted to. Talk, I'm so glad. Thank you for taking the time to watch this documentary on Netflix because it meant so much to me. It was called That's In Our so- Mother's Gardens, and it's just about black women specifically black women in America and our mother our relationship to our mothers and our grandmothers <sighs> what a beautiful and complicated subject bull you know bull. so I will say so you mentioned it because we had kind of come to the uh, <laughs> consensus that yeah we're not talking about a book it's Thursday it or Wednesday is, or whatever day th- listen like at this time of the year it's it's almost the end of the school year yeah man we've got uh, this is crunch so there's a lot going on we got sports we got it's a lot. You're, you're planning there's a lot going on so we we didn't get it together. But like you said, too, I did want to um, make sure that we had your niece there, too, because I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I, know, That's good. Right? I think that'll be a very interesting perspective and everything. Hunt so it, hunt so it. what were your what was your takeaway from In Our Mother's Garden? So and I have to say, too, because I didn't know what it was. And it was funny because my own mom had texted me earlier in the week, like, you need to watch this. You need to take <laughs> notes. I was like, OK. <laughs> I was like, all right, cool. So then when you mentioned it, I was like, well, damn, I do have to get this in this week because I had I haven't like I said, I have not been watching TV a lot. So I was like, OK, I'm going to make the time to do this. So but I didn't know what to expect. So I didn't know if it was a documentary as it was a documentary. And as soon as it came on, I thought, oh, man, I'm gonna have to shift my like the energy that I was in <laughs> when I first started watching it was not. <sighs> I don't know how to 
put it not, not heavy but do you know what I mean it just it feels like because again mother daughter relationships mother relationships it's a complex thing you I know think what I mean the first thing any media I ever really saw about it was Joy Luck Club Man, and do you remember the, that movie from the 90s I only remember it because you braided my hair we watched that movie because <laughs> you know if you don't know braiding takes forever so I mean we were at your grandma's house <laughs> And you were giving me box braids and we were watching the Joy Luck Club. I have no memory of this. I'm glad that it's, you have that. It's the only reason why now you cannot quiz me about it. I do know that it was about <laughs> generational mother daughter relationships and how in China, in, in China, America. Yes. Thank you. Um, so, yes, I do remember that, but I don't remember the specific story. Well, but it, yes. It, I remember liking the, it. Yeah, it was my first. In, that was the first thing I remember of watching something that was that well produced, talking about com- how complicated the mother daughter relationship is. Mm. No matter what you hope for, I'll never be more than what I am. Mm. Because you're desperately seeking the approval of this person, and especially since for black women living in America is such a trauma that you're. You're constantly, I already told my son this. I haven't told my daughter this yet, but we, he was old enough to have this conversation. I'm like, you're going to need to forgive me because I'm going to make mistakes that only you can see because you're better than me. I'm raising you to be better than me. So I, I, I do apologize to him when I make mistakes, but there are going to be mistakes that I don't even see because I don't know that they are mistakes. So it's... This thing where in my own life where I've had to forgive my mom and other like maternal figures for stuff that I know they didn't mean for it to be harmful because they love me, and but they can't see it because of the privilege that they gave me to learn about this that I'm able to see it. 100%. So to me, this is what that documentary because it's never one story you have to hear kind of all the stories to understand because people are different the way people handle trauma is different not everywhere in america is the same it felt like most of the stories were from the south and that's where my mom's people are from that's where she's from and that's where her people are from my dad's family's from the north so that's a whole different experience so my aunties and my cousins like all these different relationships very much there's no way to divorce it from the american narrative of slavery and oppression because that's because it affects our psychology so much because women can't thrive unless we feel safe so we have these generations of women who've never felt safe Mm. how has that affected us wow i mean that's kind of deep when you look at look at it like that so i probably it took me a little bit of time to kind of like nestle myself into it i'm I'm sorry dead everything i said about the dedication this is dedicated to paul mooney who we lost this week i forgot all about that i'm sorry like Paul Mooney gave us so much game and as flawed as he was because he's a person like the game we that he are. gave That's us That's the point yeah. of this whole thing yeah. as, uh, but the, you can you don't have to use his whole life I'm sorry sir we don't have to use his whole life as an example his work I'm just talking about his work not his personal life Were you doing that to R. Kelly? Uh, yeah like but I wouldn't necessarily give him money so he could keep doing it now but like yeah there, I, I can't divorce his talent yeah, like his talent is his talent. Yeah, but it's like, I'm not going to support you while you do what you do to black women. But you, I can't act like you're not a talented musician. Yeah. But it's the same thing with Paul Newman. I didn't want to talk about R. Kelly. I hate that you brought him up. <laughs> <laughs> but like, but I want to, but with Paul Mooney, the game that, because he has like a, a clip of an interview where he was talking about how black women during slavery, because we had to sleep with white men, we learned how much the white man hates us and how much they hate black men. And so we have this like internal psychological fear. And that's why so many women like we're hard on our daughters and work them, but they'll over coddle their sons because Ooh, they're trying to don't. protect them. Oh my God, do not. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like Talk he gave that. it like, yeah, he breaks it down. And so that's why in a lot of what in our mother's garden is, is about that like even though we don't it's not directly about men but because I know in my own family where I've seen that where there's favoritism and towards a lot of the men in the family 
and like they're not when mothers aren't as hard on their sons as they are on their daughters there is this sort of like why are you so hard on me like why don't Mm. you take the time out to make a special meal for me and you always do that for him you know like there's no way to not take that personally even if you know the reason behind Mm -hmm. it it's like I still want that love from you so why can't you give that to me but they know like what this life is going to be like from you you're going to have to work and (laughs) It, it's deeply emotional. It's deeply complicated. We're going to get into it. But that's it. what I was saying, too, though. Like, I didn't know that I was ready to, again, I, I'll ref, re-reference the topical part. Like, I liked it because, honestly, like, taking myself there, it's like, oh, my God. Like, I have to mentally prepare myself to really be engaged and really be open to having those deep conversations and listening to those narratives and stuff like that. But I thought it was a really beautiful compilation of mother daughter stories. And what I will say to, to, to your point about how moms can be about their sons. I, I will, I have to give it up to my mom as far as how that goes. My mom was one of those who I feel like across the board, I didn't, I didn't think she favored my brothers like that. They might say that she favored you. I think they do feel like that in a lot of ways. <laughs> and I think, um, you know, I mean, we can have them on the podcast. We can chop that up, but well, I won't get into all of that. Right. But I mean, I do feel like she made things to where it's like, nope, it, no, if I can't do it for you, I, I'm not doing it for you. Or maybe I, I don't know. I mean, I think you tailor think things we, toward who the person is, yes, right? Like, because I mean, both have, we're both parents with multiple children. Yes. Not everything is going to be perfectly. It's equitable. not one size fits all, and I think that's the thing that's hard for a child to understand yeah. is that, like, when your mom is interacting with your sibling in a certain way, they are basing their actions most of the. Well, I won't even say I don't know how many times I'm gonna act like I got the stats on it, but <laughs> you know, I, at least in my instance, I feel like booklet, it's fake. I, don't, I have zero expertise. Okay, I'm just talking about shit. Okay, <laughs> but it's social media, we can do whatever. <laughs> Right. Look it up. I don't know. But based on my experience, I just know that, you know, my mom's relationship with me is based off of how we are with each other, you know, and I think that because we have womanhood in common, that was something that we had in common. So sometimes it was easier for me to see her point or especially as we got older, I can also see where um, I think that she took the opposite take of like y'all are black men in America. I cannot be fucking coddling you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I Which can't be coddling you one of the because I'm I've not doing you a service. admired about your mom is, because like I said, I've known her a long time too, yeah. is her pragmatism. Yeah, she goes. Like, she's not one to be like, mm, nah. let's wait around and see what happens. No, <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> and not I mean, we, and I, we grew up in a rough city. We grew up in inner city Detroit. And I mean, I don't have to tell anybody. I mean, you hear Detroit and you have your own things that pop mm-hmm. up about that. You know, and my, you know, and my dad did. He wasn't like really ready to be a dad. Be able to put each, all three of you on her resume. She, she tells me we are her resume. She literally, that's funny you say that. She literally says that y'all are my greatest accomplishment. My kids are, you know, well loved. And I think that that means a lot. I think that is probably why I seek that out in people as far as connections because I've, I have always known I've been loved. I know I'm here out of love. I know that's why I'm, why I exist. Any person who sees my mom or see me with my mom or my mom with any of my siblings like you know instantly like oh yeah she loves you guys goes hard like uh <laughs> in the paint okay <laughs> to the point where it's like okay mom maybe it's like you can I'm make the argument now. too hard yeah but if that can maybe. even be a thing maybe because in this world what is you have to be that protection what's that what's the harry potter quote no about, no okay. you don't ask me about quotes and you know uh, good and damn well sorry. i don't know I'll the actual quotes i'll look it up <laughs> how dare you but yeah you're <sighs> what is the quote i have no idea i don't even know what you're about to say <laughs> i'm oh, scared oh, hold on i gotta i have harry it potter, harry potter yeah but i mean i think anybody who knows me knows my mom seen my mom around me knows she loves me a lot and loves all of her kids a lot and she made the world a it, better place she by did. not just letting y'all do whatever I mean I, I can appreciate it all three of you are some of my favorite people they're pre- pretty fantastic yeah. and a lot of the investment she made you know I can appreciate way more now as a parent as yes. far as just every like every wow. level I get to especially with my daughter so I had my daughter last and I every step I get to, because she's 11 now, 
But every step I get to, I have another level of appreciation to my mom dealing with me. Did you apologize to your mama? Oh, yeah. Have you done that? And I've told her she was <laughs> right about so many I things. Have, like, like So many things I used to complain about. Before I before I dropped my, my daughter off with her dad this weekend, I was like, I want you to really try this weekend when you have your soccer game to not complain because it's going to be hot. This is a hot weekend. Mm. So you're going to is you're going to want to. But if you you'll notice that people who are in leadership don't complain. Mm. They just handle stuff. So figure out what you need to do to not feel as hot. You need to bring a spray bottle. And when, you know, every That's time everybody up. starts complaining about being hot, spray them down. Like, be like <laughs> Here you, you go. Know, figure, come up with a solution. Solution oriented. Be yes, solution I love that. Solution oriented. Yes. All that stuff. And because I remember I used to complain some because I was spoiled. Like yeah, I'm only child. So I used to complain all the time. And my mom be like, listen, every time you complain, you, no one likes a complainer. No, like figure out bad. how to solve your problem because that's not somebody else's problem. And I remember reading a book one time where the author was like, every time you complain, you're actually complimenting yourself because you're saying I don't deserve this. First of all, that is that's facts because <laughs> and it's not until I looked at it like that that I've been trying not to do that because I'm like, wait a minute, am I whittling like a little wooden cross to like crawl up on to make myself a martyr right now? To be like, oh my, I did so much and, and I'm the, I was like, oh my God, is that ego? I was used to, it was, uh, I think it was a Homer Simpson quote. It's like, why does everything bad happen to me and not anybody else? Seriously. And it's, it's not, life is not, that is nah. not what life is. It's like, okay, this is just life happening. And you, it's up to you to frame it in a way that serves you. And like, you know, like you're saying, like, don't. Not to just be complaining about it, because to me, I don't think it's anything wrong with verbalizing like I don't like this thing. But honestly, the next thing needs to be what are you going to do about it? Like, what are you going to do? You know, what what actions are you actually going to do? So right. I do because um, once again, not to point important. out, you can't talk. You, there's nothing wrong with talking about what's bothering you. No. Do that. But uh, I think you said to me one time, your problem should be evolving. You shouldn't yes. be having the same problem over and over and over and over again. Yes, because you then it's you. Learn, you should learn how to solve it by now. <laughs> then it's because then it's you, and then if you don't have the answers, that's when you need to start reaching out. You know what I'm saying to your your network or whatever, or researching or whatever. But um, I think that with it, just going back to like just how men, how we perceive, you know, men being treated by their moms and stuff too. I do think that because we kind of touched on this with Eric, when we so we had the opportunity to kind of like guest star on our sound um, sound person, sound production, engineer? sound engineer. Thank you. I've been I've been drinking. Our sound engineers podcast, Ignorant Philosophy. Yes, Ignorant Philosophy, which, which I suggest check that out. just be called Philosophy because it's getting a lot less ignorant. Ooh, ooh, the evolution of ignorance. It's I still like a it. little ignorant, but like a well, lot less. Well, he's there, less. so. Right. You know what I mean? Nah, but yeah. like it's shrinking. <laughs> it's getting smaller. But no, we were kind of having that conversation about um, see, I mean, I lost my train of thought. Sorry, that that's was on okay. Me. That's no, it's no, on me because my we brain. On the podcast, and we were talking about like we were talking about something stuff. stuff. But anyway, yeah, it was solving deep. your problems and stuff. Solving your problems. Something about that. I don't remember now. That's really sad. Mm. I lost it. But well, let's anyway, go back to the documentary. Yeah, we can because it was to beautiful, it. and we really suggest you watch it, especially if you're a black woman. It's going to mean so much to you. Do, can you imagine watching it being a non-black person? Yes. That's you know what I mean. Like I don't know how you're taking it in or feel about it. Like is it? I don't know. Well, I would hope that because I would imagine it would be like watching Joy Luck Club. Okay. Because I've never been a Chinese woman. Me either. But I deeply related to that movie because those were all universal themes of wanting the acceptance of your mother. Um, the the sort of powerlessness mothers feel towards their children from protecting them against a very hostile world. This, um, and, and also too, because these were Chinese American women who were being raised by their Chinese mothers. So there's mm. always this balance between the old school and the new school where the old school is like, we sacrificed so you could have more. Why are you looking down on me? Right. Oh, that's so sad. But that's what happens. <gasps> and so <sighs> learning that lesson of you don't have to look down at these people for not having the privilege that they that they've sacrificed you to give you. A hundred percent. That's all it has to be. So because one of the things in the documentary where they're like, well, you know, mom, why didn't you tell us you loved us? Why didn't you, hug, you know, do the coochie coo stuff? And it's like love is a verb.
verb. I to thought that it. my what I the game I've given you, the protection I've given you, that's the love. Like you should know. Well, later on when they ask, like, what does your mother's mm. love look like? And it's like, my mother's love looks like my garden. Mm-hmm. It looks like my potato salad. Right. Like right, every right. everything I know how to produce now is an expression of the love mm-hmm. that was given to me because someone took the time out to show me how to do so it'd be like, You're you're mm-hmm. you're messing up. Yeah. Get yourself together, make mm-hmm. yourself look like something. <laughs> You know, like all this stuff where I feel like you're picking on me. It's like, no, I'm trying to help you Mm -hmm. because the world doesn't. Well, as my uncle, you know, because you get game from men and women like my uncle always told me the world doesn't give a fuck about you. No, so, hundred. You know, and he's the one who kind of inspired you to like read and stuff like that. Yes. You know, so he was your first like official book club. Definitely person. learn as you read and read more. If you no. have a community, it, it's great if it's the people that bore you and it's the people you're genetically related to that give you that cover and that love. But if not, make sure you find people who do care about you because those aren't always the people that care about you. But the outside world, unless you cultivate that, they don't. Yeah, you, you, just, you have to look food. for it. Yeah, a hundred percent. But I guess my question about like when non people of color or non you know non black people are seeing this i guess it just comes down to like i wonder sometimes do they really see us though do you know what I mean? Like, because like we can watch other people's stories sometimes yeah. and we can see the humanness in those stories. But I honestly feel like sometimes when they're seeing our stories, I wonder, does it hit you, though? Like, does it hit you like it hits us when we see those stories? Because I think that notoriously black women tend to be we see human. like I feel like we're the mothers of the humanity. world we humanity are, like we yeah. birth humanity so we see humanity in everything i think it an aids evolved in it. person i think it aids in it like it's something that needs to be seen to engender those feelings yeah because if they don't exist quote. thank you okay My God. here we go so this is from um book one of the harry potter series to have been loved so deeply even though the person who loved us is gone will give us some protection forever end quote I like it. And I think that's very true. Like when, because I know now, like every, and I hope I still grow to see even more and more of the protection that was given to me. And like the stuff that I don't even see now, I'll be like, oh, that was, that was more game that I didn't have the maturity to listen to then. Because even now when I tell my kids stuff, I'm like, I know they're not really listening to me, but I hope one day you really hear this. Oh, my gosh. Yes. And you'll be able to look back and be like, ooh, she was trying to give me some game, but I was just worried about getting to, you know, the party. Right. I mean, well, because I just feel like your mom at a certain point feels like the ultimate hater. <laughs> You yes. know what I mean? Like it's you like think you wake up every day and she's like everything. cracking her knuckles like, bitch, how can I make you miserable right. today? Like, um, but I mean, but for some people villain. that is the case. That's true. So and a lot of that because I always want to balance that with people who yeah. if you're, if you, it's so sad if you're, because, but it happens though because toxic narcissists do become parents sometimes. Right. So if your parent is a toxic narcissist, there's nothing wrong because one of the problems, especially in the black community is like, that's your mama. You have to basically just do whatever she says and da 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 and I, I know people in my own life who have been like, I have to create some distance between me and this person because I feel like I can't be healthy and I can't even bring my kids Damn. around to be healthy around this person. Right. And when that's your mom, that's that's why it yeah. ends up being super complicated because if your mom happens to, to be that person, like when you think about love in general, who's teaching you that from from the start? How you know you're you're watching your parents for every cues on everything. And even when you don't know that that's what's happening, that's you what are. you're doing. And so I think that you know, the way that I'm trying to mother my kids is from a space of awareness and intention and being present and showing up. And, and I, I want it to be action oriented. Because I like I your kids. I appreciate it. Listen, I because bitch, I feel like I'll be out here floundering <laughs> in this. Well, and you know, it's the job you never get any feedback on. Like if you have a regular job, you get maybe a quarterly or yearly. Um, yeah. You know, a performance performance review. review so, so how do you think and this stuff is like going? That. But like with motherhood, I remember I never had anyone telling me I was good doing a good job until my godmother told me. She Aww. was like, "You're such a good mother." And then she, when she said that, I remembered. I was like, "I should start saying this to more people because yeah, people don't hear that enough." <sighs> so it's so it's like, hard, and it's the hardest job you do. And even when I was taking, when I was back in school and taking career services, and you're filling out your resume, I'm like, I feel like I should be able to put my kids on here. And they're like, "No, you can't." And I'm like, "Well, it's the hardest thing I did." 
did and the world would have been a worse place if I hadn't. What would you say to somebody who hears you say, oh my, like being a mom is like a really hard thing. And then they're like, bitch, have you heard of like, who are those crab people that be out there catching them crabs on them boats and shit? Most dangerous. <laughs> or, or, yeah, or, most or dangerous like roofing ca- dangerous, catch dangerous catch jobs or like a, a I don't know. Yeah, like, you know, jobs like that. Like, how would you respond to that? Because I feel like... Dude, any job you can do in your pajamas is not difficult. (laughs) Yeah, so basically Bill Burr. Like, how would you respond to that? Well, first and foremost, I would be like... I love him so much anyway. I would be like, I love you, Bill Burr. And I love his podcast because it's directing two men how to behave. Because he's a successfully married man with kids. And so he's a good person to listen to for advice. I like that joke and stuff like like that. I get it. It's a joke. But I mean, how would you answer that? The Though difference is that those jobs you get to go home from. Your uh, parenting is you unrelenting, out so you're never you never clock out of parenting. 100. You're always on the clock. So that's the only like yes, you can do it in your pajamas, and you can just hand <laughs> and somebody it is some fruit snacks, and it's wonderful and all that stuff. But the other part of it is that it, it never stops, and I'm constantly in fear of their lives. Constantly, I'm trying to keep you from physically killing yourself. I'm trying to make sure because it's not just physically keeping somebody safe; it's imparting upon a human soul their self-worth and their value in the world and when you really think about it everything you do is really centered around how you feel about yourself Mm. and so when you have your own internal issues about how you feel about yourself and you're interacting with this innocent soul they're literally absorbing all of the fuck shit that you have absorbed looking at you and so it's like i can't yeah like it's i've i've just was not prepared Okay. For, I mean, anybody who knows me like knows that I went into motherhood. I don't yeah, reluctantly. Fuck it, I'm just gonna say it reluctantly, and not because I, I fucking hate kids. Like I like kids to an extent, but I always recognized that that shit looked hard to me. It did, and I didn't from get jump. Listen, from the time I was a kid, I did not understand how the, why how, this ain't why? fun. Why don't though? hand me a doll <laughs> so I can wipe its butt, like fake wipe its butt and feed it. Like that's not fun. This I feels love like oppression. Dolls. I this, still love. Dolls. I, I like the fashion aspect. I like having like Barbie, Barbie with a car and shit. No, she had stuff to do. She had a alive. career. No. I saved up money no. to get a black baby alive Fuck called baby alive, Toys R Us and was like, I'm not coming down there until y'all have one. Put it back there because every time I show up, they're sold out. I saved no. up my allowance money. I want my baby alive. I did not. I That was the last thing I wanted. Okay. I did not want a baby alive because I couldn't under, and I don't know if this was because I had two brothers. Like I, you, y'all are here with Nerf guns. We're having relay races. We're playing tag football we're climbing trees we're riding bikes like I need the adventure in my life sitting here looking at a doll who's need stuff felt like god damn this is the how is this fun yeah like it is slightly oppressive it's cool for two seconds and then it's like I'm, I'm bored. bored your outfit <laughs> hasn't changed like the, but the- motherhood does change your brain it does. It 100% kind of And changed. be ready for that. Like for the, I feel like this is a lot of stuff that wasn't communicated to me directly. But once again, the stories that I've read over the years did sort of inform me that there's nothing wrong with for like the two years after you have a baby, if you don't feel like yourself and that's oh, okay. Man, that's so normal. It's okay. Yeah. You're not the same. Why would you be? I mean, a whole person pass through you and then the chemical reaction of just all the hormones and stuff that's the part that I wasn't prepared for your body's different it's just a lot it's a lot it's a beautiful experience I'm grateful for it I do think Uh, that it has elevated I love you so much myself 100% don't listen to this song and also no listen to it at some (laughs) point not now but I mean I do think it's kind of cool that like again I want my kids to see me as people friend like Mm -hmm. I don't I'm not this I'm not this perfect entity that was Mm -mm. brought here to just you know give you all this like I need you to understand that like Like, I am a person first, and I'm trying to be as whole as I can so that you can observe this thing and get something positive, Mm -hmm. because I need you to be able to do that for whoever you love. And do it better. And do it better. Take it to the the next level. I just learned as an adult how many parents are competitive with their children, like they don't want their children to do better than them. That's so weird And and that has never been my observed experience, but when I finally saw it in the world and saw it was very real, that's so crazy to me. It's like, why wouldn't you? want your kids to do better i need you to do better buy me a house do do way better than me please 
please. Oh, my God. Because th- who do you think you are? It's like, what, shit. you think you don't get to decide? To decide. But the sadder part about that to me is, is that where does that come from? You know, that's a lot of self-hate. You mm. don't, you can't accept that in other people because you don't see it in yourself. And again, mm. I always want the people around me to reflect my best intentions. I want it to add value. I want my friends to add value. I want to feel like the people around me understand that that's my intention is to yeah. add value to their life. So even if it's just like lightening the mood or <laughs> making you a sandwich Will you say that again? or I like the you lightening that. the mood. <laughs> <laughs> your your you know your, your speech has a nice cadence to it. Oh well, thank you. There's a certain music. I realized that this week that there's a certain music to speech, which is why a lot of times when I go out in the place where I live, I want to have earbuds in because I don't like their music. <laughs> like it's when I hear bad. the music of the people around me, it's discordant and awful and fake and high pitched. Yeah, like, and I noticed the other day I didn't. If I go to other parts of town and I don't have my headphones, I'm not as stressed out. Wow. Because I don't mind it. hearing. A lot of times you'll actually hear something funny. Or maybe it's familiar. Right. And that feels good. And because that feel, I like that music. So mm-hmm. it's, um, yeah, I like your, that was just to say I like your no, music. No, well, I, I appreciate that. Same here. But again, I think that's why it's important to cultivate those relationships, not only with your parents. You know, because it is important for your kids or for me anyway, for my kids to see me just as a person first, you know. So I think it'd be cool if they were able to look back. And pod listeners, forgive me. I'm going to say some stuff sometimes. Just forgive me. I'm just just people. I'm just some person. Exactly. Because, I mean, you could arguably say because that was one of my hangups about doing this or putting putting even just content out was like, okay, so who the fuck? (laughs) <laughs> you think you are to be talking about shit. You know what I mean? Like, how I do you... I love this from um, A Different World when Debbie Allen was directing it. Was so and there was this episode where she was trying... Uh, well, she she was directing it, I know, but I know this was her voice because she was like, I am a voice in this world and I deserve to be heard. Her documentary was really good, too, about her dance school. Allen's. What was that called? Uh, Hot Chocolate Nutcracker. Oh, my God. That was so... I want to so, go to so, that. So That's still good. my goal this year to see that in December. Yeah. To go oh, to LA. It- yeah, oh, LA. We didn't get to go for my birthday. Friend. That's right. We got we we owe ourselves a trip. We do. So, yeah, and 100%. I would love to support that. Like that Dada, entity, that's yeah. her her dance academy. And once again, another fantastic documentary. Y'all got to check that one out. Maybe we can add it in the notes. Oh yes. I'm not gonna. You might. Well. I want to, but there's a couple things I want to get to in the documentary. Let's do it. And the first one was um, my favorite person that was interviewed and featured in the documentary who was uh dr coco i don't want to be disrespectful middle name selassie okay and (laughs) she was by far my favorite part of the documentary from the moment i heard her say you don't have to take shit from white people ain't nobody gotta take shit from white folk I was like, oh, yes. I'm going to like her. <laughs> I'm, I definitely need to, need to make sure I listen because I'm, I'm realizing now I got so much game from older black women. I'm like, why not get some more? Hundred, you know, like listen to what they have to say because there's always more. Like, and why never, not be that? Because my, I mean, we're getting to a certain age, right. friend, where like honestly, I, need to pass this down. I can't be the ignorant person for you know the ignorant <laughs> bitch forever. Like, I'm gonna have to evolve at some point right. so that you can be the elder because there's that transition. And she had some. So her story was fantastic. Um, she was talking about being a jury maker in because she would spend some time in Africa, and about how the. Um, the men shut her down because where she was, the women weren't allowed to work with metal. And she wanted... She had a vagina, after all. Exactly. I mean, who do Unclean. you think you are? Unclean. Gross. And so her... Because I know you've always been more into jewelry than I have. I do like jewelry. You do. And there was a section she did on about how protective jury can be. Like it can sort of be used as the symbols and the amulets and the protection. That was one of the things I liked about Wonder Woman was that her accessories were actually symbolic and um, it was to be a reminder the the cuffs she wore were um, from her mother to be a reminder that men can use your love to make you into a slave. Damn. Right? That's a hell of a reminder right there. You know? Yikes. And um, 
her, you know, the lasso of truth. Like you, you sometimes you got to force the truth out of people. Like everything was symbolic. So a lot of times you're in. So if every single accessory you have one is protection and reminders and of literal the protection, world. that one bracelet she had on looked like you could slice somebody's face yes, with it. I was like, and damn. she said too, because you wear them in places where you need protection, mm, like around your, your neck, around places. your wrists, mm-hmm. you know, near your ears. I was thinking the because uh, I was trying on earrings before I left this morning, and you know, I settled on these big boys. But like the fact that black women love big earrings, mm. and like where, and I was thinking too, I was like, is that just a reminder to keep your shoulders down? Like there should be space between your ears and your shoulders, because I noticed necks. that it mm-hmm. it frames perfectly. Like I'll have these big old earrings, but they look better if they have room to swing. And that only happens if you keep your shoulders down, and that only happens if you don't tighten up and stress out. Like huh. when you stress out, you. Ooh. Arms are going but up. But like when you're relaxed, your shoulders are down. So like just to keep your shoulders down I like and it. relax. And all these things that can be. I love Dr. Coco. She was by far my favorite part of the documentary. But How not do you the relax when you have kids? That's what I'm trying to uh, um, get to. Deep breaths. Yeah, man. Because I trying. do have it's to like, remember oh sometimes. God. I hate it when I yell at them. I do not, And my mm. kids do not like being yelled at. I love the fact that I've. Because I, I observe them. And they do. They When people start yelling at them, they distance those people. Mm-hmm. They don't like people who yell. Mm-hmm. Like my son quit basketball because his coach like you can coach without yelling you really can Tony Dungy did it and he got that's true though I so I feel two ways about that I I think I respect the fact that you don't like that it's almost like I do think also you have to prepare your kids or people in general to be around different kinds of people because you are going to be in scenarios where people are fucking yelling so you have to learn how to cope with that like that's not always going to be an option to say I can cut you can't always cut that person out because what if it was your mama now what Mm. you can't get away from her or maybe it's your grandma you still going over there that's true so you have to figure but, it out. But, but generally I'm, in life, they know yeah. that that's something they can opt out of. And that's that's to me, that's the beautiful part is that, yeah. you know, there's but another I created way. a life for them where they can. Exactly. Because, yeah, there are going to be instances. But I want you to when you can choose health. A hundred percent. Because when a lot of times you don't. Um, sorry, my son is actually texting me right now. Let me yeah. respond to him. properly. But, yeah, I definitely feel like um, everybody has their hangups about their mom and how their mom handled them as kids maybe but the forgiveness part I think is important too because like you say I mean you are literally only doing it, I mean motherhood is about survival like you're trying to teach your kids how to survive you're trying to survive the actual process of mothering children so it's you know it's like you say you want to be able to find grace for that person and I think it's easier sometimes when you're actually doing the job of parenting usually definitely not to I, say you I, can't well, get there without it I didn't have it. a lot of perspectives before I had kids like I didn't know Let's say, for instance, every time my mom would do my hair on Saturday nights and I'm like, oh, I hate this so much. She was, did, too. Yeah, like, <laughs> like that's what she felt like doing on a Saturday night. My mom was a beautiful woman. She mm. woman. She had options. Yeah. Like she could have been up. doing something else. But she, she chose to spend that time with me to give me that protection of having my hair done, which goes to show the world somebody cares about you. 100%. Because your hair is not easy to do. Do you get talked about if you show up in the world with your hair Listen. fucked up? You know, especially as a black child, because it's not like this. It's the sought after aesthetic necessarily. No. You know, unless it's being appropriated and, you know, then it's cool. <sighs> that we won't go the, there. That's a whole nother ooh, that situation. That was the other thing. Oh, sh- uh, this is a co-dedication to John Oliver, who released a oh fabulous my God, I love that. video essay on black hair. Oh, my God. Y'all and have shout to out to him for up. hiring black writers because there's no way he wrote he that. He didn't know nothing about the, ki- the a kitchen and the comb. Yeah, yeah. yeah. On, that was really. That, that was, was beautiful to hear. And I, it's clap, important, clap, clap. too, because I tried to. I'm. I'm a lightweight expert on white people. Oh, and shit. The what are your qualifications? Dis- uh, growing up Life. with them. <laughs> okay. And the thing is, like, when people are like, when we have to have these conversations about race, well, you, because you told me this, too, about that former um, white supremacist, David Wright, was it? Derek White. Derek I believe, White. Yeah. Okay. His dad was right. like, like a... Yes, um, Derek. And so Grandmaster he was talking of the KKK. about that white what we're calling white people because you know I don't believe in white people Mm -hmm. but people who consider themselves white they're not going to be able to hear this message from black people they have to hear it from other people that they consider white because to us it just feels like complaining right so they have to hear it from a source that they consider valid because the way racism works is anything black is invalid so you to actually have a validating message that can be heard from the people who need to hear it it needs to come from 
some people like John Oliver and the English accent helps too because oh, yeah, makes we were fancy, oppressed by nice. the English and <laughs> Stockholm Syndrome. Oh my gosh. So, yes. <laughs> not Stockholm though. It's Stockholm Syndrome it is, is real when they talk about like, well, there were lots of slaves who liked living on the plantations. Oh my God. Like, yeah, like they were treated very well. It's like, yeah, people, as a coping me- mechanism, people learn to love their oppression. Yes. Yeah. That's uh, Because true. again, like what you see is normal. You, you know, it's, it starts to get normalized and just because it's normalized doesn't mean it's healthy. It doesn't mean it's productive. And one of the one of my favorite messages that I didn't have to write down from it was rest is reparations. We have been programmed that we are not valuable unless we're producing value for somebody else. Boom. And that's not true. You're just valuable all by yourself. Just you, you, you. And think about and that is why I think, you know, like, I mean, not to go back to the appropriation, but to me, like if anybody doesn't understand that messaging because it's not like people can't appreciate another culture and want to infuse that into you know their their life their experience or appreciate influence it but i think that that's the main point that's why people feel away is because unless black people are producing for others there's no value in it until it's somebody else doing the same shit that we've been doing and so that it just doesn't feel good i mean at the end of the day it doesn't feel good and i don't have to be married to it i don't have to personally feel any kind of way about a white person wearing cornrows but in general when you see other cultures celebrated for stuff that black people get shit upon for it's it's like wow you know wow wow cool cool Mm. perfect interesting that's that's uh that's real fucking Mm. cool i like that and you know what this is something else i've observed just as an um an expert on what we're calling white people first of all i just need you to understand i did not know that you i need to see your degree I want to see your credentials. Oh, on white people, or yeah. so-called white people. Yeah, I'm gonna print you up a document. Okay, so that you yeah, can, like, I'll, I'll get laminated that, I'll get and put it up. I'll get it to you. Okay, for sure. But I found generally in my research that the type of <laughs> so-called white people that tend to be good allies, uh, not just allies, because we have some very imperfect allies, which will get you there. But the people who are actually good allies tend to be the least favorite child in a family. Ooh. And because the American experience has been treating black people like the least favorite child, you see a lot of the similarities and they're able to emotionally relate because it's like, oh, so when I do stuff and they give credit to the favorite child and how that makes me feel, that's how black people feel feel when their stuff is I feel invisible. Right. And even though I'm the one who's doing the work, but they give the favorite child the credit okay, that's, I get what's going on here because I've experienced that myself where I'm being discounted because for whatever reason, I don't even know why I'm not the favorite. I'm doing all the right stuff. Why in that desperate uh, seeking, because everyone's seeking their parents' approval, no matter what. It doesn't matter what they did to you. We're programmed for that. It's part of our survival. Our our parents teach us how to survive. We're dependent on them for so long, though. Think about the human experience. Like, Like, we're one of the only species that, is so interdependent with yeah. their, We're you know, parents. A hundred. I mean, so for, so long, for so long. That just give birth and walk off. I'm out here in this ocean now. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm strutting my stuff to the ocean, and I'm out here now <sighs> without yeah, any direction. So, so, hard. so yeah, that's yeah, interesting. Touch- I never thought about that. Say that again. Elephants, elephants are like that. So yeah. Okay. Okay. So yeah, he's uh, so. Eric was making the point that elephants are that way too, as far as just the interdependence. But no, it's they, a limited- they're born walking. Right, but I think he needs survival wise. Yeah, because I, I don't know nothing about it. But I was like, just saying but it. But we're even more so vulnerable because a lot of those mammals are born being able to walk. Think yeah, about we're how out long here it just, takes for basically God. we give birth to humans, and it's, it's a survival thing because we can't be pregnant that long because we wouldn't be able to survive the pregnancy and be able to nurture the children. But we basically give birth to um, not embryos, but they're not fully formed. No, like that's why a lot of people there. don't yeah like a lot of times we're giving birth to like it's a person who can't survive on their own like if you walk off like and they that's can't by walk. design I feel like I yeah. feel like it just it's an it's a direct link to the fact that we are connection is what being human is like yeah. it just kind of and also to that elephants point. are better than us Pro- like I when mean, you examine their society but here's the other thing I've never examined them so I, elephants I can't say that can't be um, raped female elephants it, are unrapeable first of all wait 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 why do you know this <laughs> Unrapable? Books. Oh, yeah. Wait, has anybody 
I don't. So the way their <laughs> anatomy works, elephant there, rapes. There are certain. Be, if a mammal, f- if a female mammal can or can't get raped, that completely changed the social dynamics. That like, would be basically sweet if you could close it off. <laughs> like, male, like I think that it's. Um, I think whales are that way. They can't be raped. And I, um, first of all, elephants just, can't be raped the fact because that of you how have their the genitals. Rape of- like basically, they have to accept their partner. Like so, unless they are willingly going into this, you can't access their genitals. Like they have totally different vagina. Like, I just ill. First of all, I, sorry, I pictured. Genitals. I pictured. <laughs> <laughs> I pictured just like bars closing over There's, there. I don't want to get into all the details. Everybody I'm can just do mad their you know research. this, I guess. Yes, just, but this. it changes elephant society. So they have a female-led society. Like, Ooh. elephant societies are matrilineal. And so, and men are just kind of like, they're like, okay, what you want me to do? Right, like, so go over there and smash bit. that thing over there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because you cannot procreate unless you have the female's permission. Damn. Period, point blank. Now, that would be sweet. Different, now, primates, which we're in the group of, Highly rapeable, oh and so God. that changes, <laughs> highly, highly rapeable. that changes rapeable. that changes society. So everything kind of comes out of that. So everything's organized where it's like, let me just arrange things so I don't get raped. First, <laughs> oh my God, oh my gosh, sorry. That no, I'm just. It's just weird how like a lot of the woman's experience is literally mm-hmm. trying not to be raped. Yeah, and so I just feel like rape. I don't know. I don't want this to be a theme of all of our book clubs right now. <laughs> rape well, just always is coming up. Like this but, is, but just. It's a thing, guys. Rape is out there. It's out there, yeah. and you have to basically plan for it. But also, or you're planning. Uh, you have to plan against it, or you're planning for it. Oh, geez. Oh, god. Yeah. I guess that is true. Yeah. Yeah. That is really fucked up. It also, is. I want to go be back. More like elephants. <laughs> we should. I don't know how. I don't need. I haven't read up on them, but <laughs> um, I like how you said that. Maybe like the least favorite child mm, is maybe like for the person. Wh- for, yeah. Think about because white people get weird about redheads. They do you notice do. that? I have like noticed they, that. It's like they fucking hate I it. It's like the worst thing you can like be. I remember back in the early 2000s when I was doing like internet dating, like I did Yahoo dating. And Yahoo like you could, dating, y'all. Yeah, don't Google yeah. that because that's going to be what? Yeah. Okay, And don't. so you could kind of pick, like they, it was before things were ethical, so you could like It's like I don't out. want no redheads. I don't want you no blackies. No blacks. <laughs> and that's the thing. Like first things first, like no, because I remember even back then, instead of selecting black, I just selected other because so many okay. people just automatically X out black. Right. And so I was just like, fuck, I just want to be able to see everybody who's, who's out there, there who didn't just. Yeah. But I didn't think about the fact like I should block out people too who just block out black. But whatever. We we're dumber. <laughs> I was dumber then. And so but one of the things that was very common that men would or at least like black men didn't say this. Though. They're like, yeah, whatever. Right. But like white men, they would say no redheads. And I remember asking this one white dude. I'm like, why no redheads? And they're just like, eh. they basically said they don't like, like red gross. pubic hair. Ew. OK, well, so I mean. Right. Listen, I'm just I've never I don't get it because, nah, you dumb. know, but I feel I'm sure that, you know, maybe that's why like a Bill Burr, like you're married to a black lady. I always thought about that because I will notice that sometimes when you see interracial dating, you'll notice like a redhead uh, white guy and a yeah. black woman. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay. Because they're just okay, seen as undesirable genetic yeah. material. And I don't know genetic how true material. this is because I don't have the real numbers on it. But I just know this from, I because I did, I, we, we didn't go all the way, but I did mess with this one redhead dude. We did go all the way. And I remember Louis C.K. mentioned this about himself. They tend to be girthy. Really? Yeah. Okay. And that, that's I don't a fun know fact about. Isn't that a fun fact? <laughs> well, y'all, I mean, maybe if people know, know about that, they can let us know. I don't have enough numbers to say across the board, but I was like, not surprised. girthy, though, first of all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, good for you guys, redheads, yeah. if that's true. So big you ups never to don't girth. just dismiss I mean, redhead guys. They're out here. Okay. I mean, yeah. So that's that, that fact, I've never actually thought about that. You know what I mean? As far as the white people that are making those connections or I think it's the people who have lived around people different than them mm-hmm. too. So that, that works. That's better for everybody. Yeah. Diversity makes everybody better. Um, it's 347. Okay, so we got to oh, oh wrap this shit Damn it. up. Okay. Gotta wrap I got to do this one up, quote from here. Up. Do the quote. For, um, Don't say self-care. it fast. It's okay. Self-care. Self-care. Mm-hmm. Cause that's Cause what this is. Cause they're talking about radical self-care. 
Folks only want you to care for yourself only to the extent that it doesn't inconvenience them. <gasps> Golly. That's yeah, a word that right now. Was. We need church music in get the background. That, dun, get dun, that. Dun, dun, dun. I'm going to do the Holy Ghost dance. Yes. Y'all can't see it, but it's happening. Our worth Go. is only seen until we produce something for somebody else. So don't let that be your guide. You're worthy in yourself. That's and We are worthy. That's why we're here. Like We're uh-huh. creating the space uh-huh. for us and to be us. And don't worship these other people's ancestors. Worship because people are like, oh, I'm not in the ancestor worship. That's because you're worshiping them people. You know who George Washington is. Do you know who your ancestors were? And really, the word worship, I think, can put people off because I don't necessarily like that word for anything. I think it's just like um, acknowledgement. That's what people want to feel. People want to feel acknowledged. And I think you have to acknowledge your past. You have to acknowledge your mom, her mom, her mom. And to say give their you names. And say I did their that names. after watching this. I said all the names and of con- all it's the like ancestors Ariki, I knew. Going back yep. to, you know, Lovey Very much. Um, Jones Thank book. Thank you, Lovey. Just basically kind of like recognizing your ancestors recognizing who you are and where you're going and it kind of gives you that full circle moment of like self-actualization so I think that's what we're all trying to get to that's the higher level of we give you permission to do that do that I mean I'm trying to I'm not I'm not nailing it every day or anything but you know hopefully this podcast kind of helps us get there so with that, let's take a quick break and then we're going to wrap this shit up because it's almost the end of the show. Nope. No? Oh, okay. I mean, what time were we supposed to meet with Chris? Yeah, so, we need to go now. This is it. That's what, okay. <laughs> I'm just doing that for the, the edits. Show. Yeah. Okay. okay. It's almost the end of the show. You're not supposed to say no, it's yes and cat. Yes and, you're correct. Thank you for okay. the correction. Because, yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh. You know what I forgot to, well, I didn't forget. I didn't know. So I'm not even going to say that. But before we kind of spin the wheel, typically at the end of the show, we will spin a wheel and it has all the different books that we want to read on there. And then we pick it for the next episode. I wanted to invite you guys before that to share your stories with us. We need Mm, books to add to the wheel. And we also need stories to add to another wheel that we're going to make. Okay. So that means you guys. So we need stories that will be random conversations, basically. And I think we could probably put those topics in the description, wherever the hell that sure, goes. Sure, random somewhere. topics. Random topics. So it'll range from, um, gosh, like parenting fails. And I mean, you know, just just read the thing. It'll be in there. So, but we want, Whatever we want, we want to hear us talk about. That too. So if there's books you guys want us to talk about, if there are topics you guys want us to talk about, please email us at thefabpodcast at gmail.com and then put in the description or the title, read this or random wheel conversations. That way we kind of know which one um, you're sharing with us. So that's about it. So do that part. And we'll then, ignore everything else. Yeah, we'll ignore everything else. And so I think we're going to go ahead and spin the wheel. Okay. All right. Bam, 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 bam. This is Alice Walker's probably, to me, her, I don't know about best, but it's definitely the one that impacted me the most. Okay. I like it. Uh, we'll possessing it. the Secret of Joy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Because just the the title itself is intriguing because I want to possess well, the Secret of Joy. I like joy. I do too. What's the secret? That's one of the hardest emotions, arguably, to get to. Really? Though. I think so. Think about that. R- true joy. Okay. I see it in my kids, so I mm-hmm. can possess it through them a lot of the time, but I forget about actual joy. You forget, like, I'm someone who's joy? constantly pursuing, like, the, yeah, <laughs> pretty <laughs> joyful. <laughs> Fuck. I don't. I'm, I mean, I don't want to just show trying. off, but like, it's not showing off. That's beautiful. Again, this is why I think I attract people that are that way because I I would venture to say most of the most important people to me are those people, and I think it's because <laughs> what I'm chasing. Okay, that joy, trying to, that passion. Because it's not like it's not there. It's almost like I, you don't want to rest in that place, or it's hard to rest in that place because you know I'm scared. I'm a scaredy cat. We're all scared. scared. Like we're all, uh, we like to think of ourselves as these brave geniuses, but we're all scared. We're we're scared morons. That's what's funny. I'm not. I never have thought about. We're scared idiots. Yes. And I feel like my instinct is to pursue things that spark that joy in me. That's beautiful. That's my instinct. Was whenever there's something that there's a thread of joy, I'm constantly pulling at it. I will avoid it sometimes because I'm like, well, if I pull at it and it comes to me, then I can lose it. So is it better to just like for oh. for bold joy? Yeah, that's so. That's how sick I am. Interesting. No, it's is not there, even sick. It's, it's is, is anybody anybody up there like that but me? <laughs> is it just me? I feel like there's a, I'm because <laughs> in some re- in a lot of ways, what I respect about you is your practicality. 
Because you are thinking about, like, if I pull at this thread, what's going to be left if I keep pulling I'm at it? I'm scared. But uh, me, personally, <laughs> I'm just like, give it to it me. It could be good. It could be good. All right, and I want to be more in that space. But I'm anyway, like, that's put a it in my life. Like, there's so I much. I think that there is, I feel like there's an inexhaustible wellspring of joy. That's beautiful. I need, that's what I'm saying. I want to be always in that place because I do think I don't you, think it can run out. I honestly don't think it can run out, so I constantly pursue it. And so Beautiful. when I saw, well, first off, I read uh, The Color Purple because that's all this, Alice Walker. She wrote the book. I read that. I don't know about y'all. I never, I just saw the movie. Here's the thing. I wasn't allowed to watch R-rated movies. So I wasn't able to watch Color Purple when it came out. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. But they can't keep books like my yeah, mom. Because my mom, do? once again, I admire her very much because she was like, I'm limiting what you're exposed to. Sure. Now, of course, she had no idea like when, she was, when, it happens, when she was signing those tuition sh- checks. She didn't know that there was going to be a teacher sucking my finger. Please do not. I bring think that she back. should get her. I, I think she that. should get all of her money back just for that incident. Like, not even me. Sorry. My mom. My mom should get all the money she paid back to that institution just for that institution. I, I, I know, can't. right? Let's not even go there. Yeah. No, we but go I, I, I constantly chase after the things that give me excitement, pleasure. Like, and it's usually information, like good information. And so I, it's so funny because I couldn't watch, I remember I really wanted to watch Boys in the Hood and I couldn't watch it. So there was a novelization. So I read it. And I couldn't watch Color Purple because it was rated R. So I read it. And quite honestly, the worse. book, yes. The book is always <laughs> The more, books like, always have way more in it. And it blew my mind. And I loved it. And I was like, okay, what else did this woman write? And then I found no. everything. She, she has books of essays, poems, yeah. and novels. And one of her best novels to me was Possessing the Secret of Joy. Yeah, man. Which is um, one of the heavy themes is female genital mutilation. So just be ready for that. <laughs> So we went from a whimsical book. Yeah, but like that's Mindy, how it so always goes. That's I know. It does. Yeah, it gets, so we, now we're going to go to the go universal back, theme. Find your way back. <laughs> Miso- oh, you know what's so funny too? That's how I I learned the word misogyny from possessing the secret yeah, of joy. It's funny if you've never read if you've it, never heard it if you just see the word because I remember I was a junior in high school and I did my um, junior thesis on this book. And my English teacher um, had to explain to me how to pronounce misogyny. I didn't I forget. have a junior thesis. Oh, we had to do a junior and senior thesis. Did I have a junior thesis? <laughs> I'm interested. Do you want to comment? You need to comment okay, so they were sucking my fingers, but they were also making me write junior Gross. thesis. <laughs> I hate so. everything about that. That's, so yeah. my, my English teacher was very appropriate. She was a woman. And she, um, once again, she had never heard of female genital mutilation. Oh, like wait, when she, you were teaching her something? Yes, I was. Wow. Yeah, I actually, and of course, because I'm always a visual person, I think I included like artwork as well in the report. Hold on. I thought she was getting ready to say pictures of it. No, 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 not of vaginas. Uh, it was, that's, of course, of well, course the first I went to that. story in to the book is actually um, it's an allegory about a panther. So I just did like this sort of panther. I read <laughs> this before. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll cover that when we get to it. But I so, don't remember. <laughs> let me get to it. It's it's fabulous, and it it. I'll I, do a teaser. I, I'm fortunate that I read that when I was so young. So it'll because be interesting I was to revisit it to now. revisit it as an adult. But let's hear it. Yes, I'll just give the formal. This is it, y'all. For real, we're about to wrap it up. <laughs> we'll do this all day. Yeah, we will. But just to briefly describe the book, um, this is from Goodreads, so I just kind of pulled this. These aren't my words, but. It says, while not the sequel to The Color Purple or The Temple of My Familiar, Possessing the Secret of Joy follows the life of the barely glimpsed character from these books. Combining fact and fiction, communing with the spirits of the living and the dead, Alice Walker in this novel strikes with graceful and powerful at the heart of one of the most controversial issues of our time. And the character (laughs) character she's talking about is Tashi. Tashi, so if you're that. if you can remember from the color purple, when, I don't. When was who was Tashi in the, in the movie? So Tashi was, she in the movie? was briefly at the end of the color purple at the table. No, no, no. Oh. She wasn't at the table because um, the original title for the color purple was "Look for Me at the Sunset." Okay. Look for me in the sunset, and that and at the end of the book, that's when she sees um, Nettie. In the sunset, right? Oh, I love that. Right? The the skit ready to cry. And so when she shows up and introduces Adam and Olivia, Adam's husband is Tashi. Oh, that? 
Oh. You there now? You there now? Okay. <laughs> you there? Y'all need that. I'm always the only one. We're there now. So we we briefly get to bl- glimpse Tashi in the color purple. And this Shut novel is face. about Tashi, who is Adam's African wife, and her journey through um, Adam <laughs> through female circumcision. Yeah. I'm so slow. Adam, right. Uh, okay, bye. <laughs> what? What? Because what it did just, you just realize? It, I mean, I, I just started re-remembering it. Like, it sure. was like all this time it was latent inside my soul. Mm-hmm. It was like, yes, Adam. Because it's that part from Color Burn where they're like, yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, and then they, like, do yeah. the little cut and stuff like that. And that's an allegory that's supposed to represent the genital cutting that God actually damn. happened. But they Look couldn't that. show that. You know, in a Hollywood movie, so they just cut their faces. Oh, my goodness. But in real life, it was supposed to represent See, the circumcision and okay. stuff like that. Well, and let's I, wrap that shit up. Nope. We can't say nothing else about it. Okay. Because this, again, she mentioned this might have to be a two-parter because it is kind of... Well, you got the audio book now get, because we had to find one cassette. Hold on, I found it. Y'all, I got it on Amazon. <laughs> It was lightly I used. I can't wait to listen to it because I've never listened to it. I've read it over and over and over again. It is narrated by um, Alice Walker and somebody else. So it'll be her oh. voice too, which will be nice. And I have an MP3 like digital converter too. So I can't wait. That's dope. I can't wait. So yeah, that is the book we're going to talk about, guys. Please come back and join come. us. Yes, and. So guys, thank you. I mean, you know what? This is the fake ass book club that's what it was <laughs> and I appreciate you guys hanging in there with us to kind of hear about our journey and then also to just kind of like our origin stories kind of in mm. a way everybody's origin story um, coming from their moms and stuff and honoring our moms so thank you mom I know thank you mom cause and I wasn't easy I mean I wasn't the worst but also we all were trash at some point you, you know what I mean I could have been better and you could have been worse and vice versa and <laughs> I just again that's just human relationships and I yes. do think you have to give people grace and stuff but it was a beautiful illustration of those complicated and beautiful relationships we have with the people we call mom and um, you know you guys can check that out if you want to also I guess because since technically we don't have to spin the wheel I mean we can add that we can spin it I mean it's going to be the same book like our goal for the next actual book club will probably be the um, possessing the Secret of Joy book yes. from Alice Walker. Yes. So join us for that. You guys need to come back. Check us out. Oof. Hopefully we'll have our special guest. Thank you for hanging in there with us, guys. Again, this is the Fake Ass Book Club, and we will see you next time. Peace. Bye. Peace, peace, peace. Before we go, we must give thanks to our sound engineer, Eric Dizzy from Dorian Keith Media, to Urban Nerd for providing our music, Buzz Viral Marketing runs our social media and legal services were handled by Trazen A.M. Atkins. If you like what you heard, please feel free to join us every Wednesday for another fake ass book club. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you guys for listening. You can check us out at thefabpodcast.com. Please subscribe, rate, and review our podcast wherever you're listening right now. We want to hear from you. Come put it in our life. Thanks again. And until next time, peace, love, and the Fake Ass Book Club. We out.